Welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community. Uh, you may be beaming in from YouTube or Facebook or listening to the podcast, but the best place to always find the latest and greatest schedule of all of these live events and the recordings will be in the Reinventing the Tattoo Community. You can go to either of the app stores, pick your poison, the Google Play or Apple uh, Apple App Store, I guess, and then do a search for Reinventing the Tattoo and then give it a download. This is a Reinventing Drawing group with Jake Meeks from the Fireside Tattoo Network. And if you are an artist and are interested in joining this Zoom, then I suggest you go to the community or community.reinventingthetattoo.com, sign up, click on the events link, and you'll get the Zoom. If we post that out publicly, then spammers get a hold of it, and that's no good for anybody. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, some weekly events that we have going on. This is a weekly event. We do this every Monday morning at nine o'clock, nine o'clock Eastern. It's a little earlier for Jake, way earlier for people on the West Coast. Europe has it easy, but every nine o'clock we start off our weeks like this. We have uh, noon on Mondays. Uh, Let's talk tattoo with Marco Scarbo from Needle Jig, and nine o'clock at night we have subscriber exercises with, for Guy Aitchison's uh, Canon. So if you subscribe, it's a yearly uh, subscription. It's uh, well worth it. It's less than a dollar a day, as some of the members have pointed out and it not only gets you all the online courses but also access to these Monday exercises uh, exclusively with a guy everyone's drawing and doing um, again it's like basically uh, going to the gym for your art art brain art muscles however it works anyways uh, check out courses.reinventingthetattoo.com for that uh, we often have Tuesday and Wednesday special programming, including we had an archaeologist on talking about uh, the oldest tattoo mummies. Uh, we've had uh, chemists on to talk about inks and whatnot. And we have a great program coming up every Thursday at noon is the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. And then every Sunday at 1 is the Reinventing Drawing Group with Jason Lesser. Uh, let's see, real world events coming up. They are starting to actually happen. There's a Paradise BYOB, so we know a couple awesome people will be there teaching seminars and whatnot. We're not selling tickets yet because we barely know how many people we can fit in. We are still in a pandemic. Uh, but uh, October 3rd to the 6th, we will be doing something at Jiminy Peak, uh, including setting up all the, the webcasting, different sets and whatnot, and having seminars. So you can pencil that in, um, or if you're interested, you might just grab a hotel room. Anyways, uh, let's see, November 12th to the, uh, 12, 13, 14 is the Brussels Tattoo Convention, and we will be doing seminars. Nick Baxter and Ivana and I will be doing seminars over there. We'll be beaming in either a drink and draw or a, a drunk critique. Or I don't know, we'll be doing something. And then, um, yeah, okay, uh, real world sponsors that help keep this programming free and hopefully uh, hopefully beaming out everywhere. Um, let us know in the chat rooms if it's working for you and where you're beaming in from and uh, maybe some of your inspirations. Um, okay, but this uh, programming is free thanks to Inkjet Stencils. They, uh, yeah, they sell uh, a stencil solution that goes into your uh, eco tank Epson so you can treat your tattoo reference on your iPad or your computer uh, like in Photoshop or whatever and then print it right out they also sell the sheets of paper and uh, check it out inkjetstencils.com we've got loose screw tattoo.com uh, Jesse Smith is always looking for awesome guests and residents uh, check it out. The website's got a join the team link. Let them know that you found out about them on uh, Reinventing the Tattoo. And then rawpigments.co has uh, their tapping right into the source of the pigments. Uh, we're out there in California, uh, acrylic, uh, acrylic free and vegan. Last time I think I said vegan free, which didn't make any sense. It's acrylic free and vegan. Check them out, uh, rawpigments.co. It's st There's still a little bit of time. We have samples going out with from Raw Pigments, and Cheyenne was awesome and sent out uh, a ton of needles and little backpacks and stuff. So if you, you have to check out the Equinox special, it, it's kind of, it just is where this address catching machine is. So if you go to reinventingthetattoo.com slash Equinox, and you sign up, you will get your free ticket replay to check out. It's an amazing uh, visual set from Android Jones and, and Aja Lu did the live soundtrack to it. It was amazing. So you don't have to check it out, but you will get the link for the uh, for the replay. There's also a an art jam, a psychedelic art jam, where people dive in to uh, all sorts of psychedelic art kind of questions and answers. It's, oh, that's like another two hours, and it's got all sorts of great artists in there. Anyways, if you keep scrolling down to the bottom of that watch page, then you'll, you can put in your address, and we will send you a goodie bag. And if you have already signed up, please be patient. We are 
getting the rest of the packaging together to send out as we speak. Okay, uh, affiliates. Well, we'll talk about the Fireside Tattoo Network with Jake all the time because he is hosting this show. We have the Apprenticeship Diaries from Amy, who chats with all sorts of apprentices and mentors, uh, you know, rooted in tattooing, but all sorts of uh, other mentor-mentee uh, relationships. Let's see, I think that's everything. Uh, Cheyenne goodie bags, yes, it was awesome. Okay, I'm going to fall into the background. I will be reading off some of your comments and maybe uh, sharing it around in the, in the background. And thank you very much, Jake, for doing this. If uh, Actually, if you uh, are interested in the Reinventing the Tattoo canon and go to reinventingthetattoo.com slash fireside, then you'll get 10% off and we'll uh, buy Jake some 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 tasty beverages. Okay, um, yeah. I'm going to hop into the background here. Cool, man. Thanks. Yeah, very awesome. Exactly. Say again. Uh, I was still setting up the the dates of the paradise. Um, it's October. it's uh, October third to the sixth, and it is indeed a Sunday to Wednesday. Oh, sweet. That's a little, right. little weird, but uh, it, I don't know any conventions or anything that. Well, it's not a convention. Again, it's BYOB. Bring your own okay. brain, bring your own brushes, bring your own bud, booze, uh, berries if you're a vegan. I don't know. Bring your own. Again, we'll be sharing knowledge across a, a variety of crafts in a relatively informal manner because, again, we can't fit too many people. But that's that's Wednesday to, sorry, it's Sunday to Wednesday, October 3rd to the 6th. And uh, that was most tattooers' days off. That's what everyone requested. So that's what we're going to do. Gotcha. And, that's, uh, what, that's what I was going to ask. What made you choose a Sunday through a Wednesday? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's really, uh, especially since it's not a, convention people aren't going to be getting tattooed there there's no reason to be like catering to the tattoo crowd right no and uh, again we asked all the tattooers across a couple platforms everyone was like you know uh, sunday monday monday tuesday tuesday wednesday i don't know i guess yeah. we, we kind of picked wednesday because we do four day events and um and I, I, i'm trying we're trying to figure out where to put the live drunk critique um yeah. it's, it definitely can't be the first night probably like if it's the last night then it's hard to like clean up for an event while doing drunk critique if it's a second yeah. to last day then you know we're just going to lose a third of the uh but again it's not a real event so maybe this is the perfect venue for doing something like this <laughs> i like uh yeah i like i like the four-day event i haven't i haven't done many of those but it's like uh i know we talked about conventions last time on uh, last week uh, a little bit but like when on a regular event you show up friday and you're like scrambling get all your stuff set up for the event and then it feels like friday is over and then saturday is good but then sunday you're like worried about the convention shutting down early so if you're tattooing you like are all constantly watching your phone to see what time it is and knowing that you have to be able to break down and get out of there it's like really it feels like just one day that like, the weekends fly by so fast yeah, you know, we uh, we started right from the get-go with a four-day format for some reason. And uh, I think we got like halfway through the first year's programming and I was like, why are we doing four days? I mean, it feels right, but like, that's it's yeah. a long time. And so in, in 2022, I actually have the dates. I meant to have them down here, uh, but we have solid dates for the Paradise Tattoo Gathering. It's like the third weekend of October. It'll be a Thursday to a Sunday, a full-on, yeah. you know, tattoo gathering. And uh, if anybody still has tickets from the, uh, the last one that had to get canceled, we'd be happy to honor them. And uh, we're pretty excited to finally uh, be in a position where we can, you know, do that again. But yeah, the four days is great. At first we were like, is that going to be too much? But, uh, you know, every Saturday people are like, I can't believe we have to go home on Sunday. You know, Sunday is the last day. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, that'll be nice to be able to make good on all those. I know that was a stressful time whenever you had Yeah, I mean, I got, we got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of people back. We didn't get everybody back. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm still not even, you know, flush with dose. So it's like re refunds are, are coming slowly, but, sh you know, but I still pick away as I can. Having yeah. two events now, we're also doing the Rock River in July. Um, yeah. So now there's two other events where we could honor those tickets and, and help make good with people. Because um, the intention was not to, you know, not do the 10 year anniversary Paradise Tattoo Gathering. The intention was to kill it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Cool. Well, what's up, everybody? How are you guys? How was your weekend? Hi. Okay. What's up, dude? What's going on? What uh, everyone had a good weekend? Did you all tat tattoo all weekend, or did you have a weekend off? I had um, the weekend off when I was on the beers last night. Oh uh, yeah, on the beers. Yeah, <laughs> feeling a bit fragile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yesterday <laughs> was my son's eleventh birthday party, which always turns into a bunch of adults drinking and kids <laughs> running around. So same thing, <laughs> same thing here. I'm a little, a little puffy under the eyes. <laughs> What's uh, what, yeah, yeah. What's uh, what's everyone 
what's everyone working on? I got to change my view where I can see everybody better. There we go. What's uh, what's everybody working on? Any, any new projects this week that are exciting? I've got a back piece that I'm working on. Um, oh, yeah? I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, so, yeah, uh, a, a fox with some ferns and stuff. Yeah, but I want it to be really illustrative, like Magnum style yeah. hatching, and uh, the ferns and the backgrounds to be more like a fabric print or so, so really saturated but with negative space. It's you know it's going to be quite chunky. Yeah. Um, the idea is obviously not to make it look childlike, but or or just shit. You know, it needs All to right. be. It's a it's a fine line, isn't it, when you're going for a style like that? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, are you just are you just at the kind of mock up phase of it now, or you're just putting together some imagery and moving it around? Or? Yes, I've um, I just wanted to nail the fox. The background is going to be it's going to have to tie in with what's already there. So he's got a sleeve of kind of oak leaves and stuff like that, and then on the other side is the old tribal stuff. So. That's why I want it to be quite chunky. If you know, it needs to kind of blend together. That's what I came up with. So I'm going to probably stencil the fox and then freehand the fern and so on. I want there to be like a big fern coming off the buttock, you know, in negative and oh, other yeah. shapes coming around so that <clears throat> it's not just all wall to wall color. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. be a lot of freehanding involved, which is how I like it. Yeah. So the fox is going to be kind of, you're going to overshoot the space. The fox is going to take the, the majority of his back. Yeah. Or, her, or their back. Yeah. Yeah, huge. It's gonna be huge. He's a he's a big guy, and um, yeah, I'm going for proper like magnum shading. You know, like yeah, like big chunky chunky stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. When, do you, when do you start that? I haven't booked it yet. We've we've actually oh. we've got a date for opening up again, which is in two weeks. Oh, so okay. the next few months they're just gonna be taken up with rebooking things that got cancelled. Yeah. Uh, there's a huge backlog to work past and then then we can maybe think about that so it's been it's going to be a while but he knows that that's okay yeah 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 and it's nice you get to play around with it for a while and uh try different precisely things. Yeah, yeah yeah i've been looking at lino cuts and things like that just to get in my head into a different space for for that kind of thing right. alex benny did a nice book of lino cuts where he used patterns and varied the thickness of the patterns then, then they made up a portrait of something. I don't know if you've seen his his work. Oh, who, um, Alex? Alex, Alex Binney. Alex Binney. Oh, from yeah, Interview. Sorry. And yeah, yeah, he's a very um, famous English tattoo artist from back in the day when... Oh, legend. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Huh. yeah. Okay. And he produced, he produced some really nice artwork, some um, lino cuts of tattoo artist portraits of them. But he'd say he'd start with a spiral, just a, a line spiral, and then parts of the spiral would be thicker where there's shadows, like blacker, and then and, and then he's just he's done it, he's nailed it. It's incredible. So oh. I like looking at those, and I don't I don't think I'm gonna give the fox that kind of look, but I'm definitely heading that kind of direction. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Benny B I and then I all right. That's the uh, area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. That's, so it's, yeah. it's a lot of a lot of like pattern based uh, tattoo work was a lot of pattern based or was it like represent? Uh, yes. Like, uh, yeah. He was one of the first to do really big, chunky, yeah. abstract stuff. Oh, that's cool. His yeah, shop yeah. was called Into You. And I mean, I think they folded now, but they were they were doing it for 20 years. But oh, yeah, he's, he happens to also be a really, really credible artist. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So you're gonna yeah. try to take some uh, take some influence from that for the for the ferns mainly or for the entire piece? Yeah, I want it to go throughout the whole piece. So yeah. um, I'm not going for as patterned as he is, but but that kind of graphic look, I really love it. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's kind of what I'm playing with now. Normally I do Japanese stuff, so this is a little bit of a departure for me. So I'm enjoying that. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I can't wait to see it come to life. That's. Um, Thank you. It's crazy that you're still like that you guys still aren't tattooing. I keep forgetting that. Uh, it's it's uh, been months. I mean, four yeah. months or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I've forgotten how to do it. I might have forgotten <laughs> how to talk to people. That's my main worry. Right. <laughs> I I have uh I've 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 got that concern for myself uh, today. This is my first. So today I'm from here. Well, I go to the gym, but then I, I've got 
four or five consultations every hour for the entire day. And it's my first consultations in probably a year, uh, just wow. because I, I'm, I'm working on existing pieces and then we're starting to taper off and finish a few. So I've started a few in the last couple of weeks, um, but those consultations had been done back before COVID. And so I like, so physically meeting people and doing the consultations, uh, this will be my first time in almost a year. And I have, like wow. I said, four or five today to start new new projects. But luckily they've, the, the way that we're doing it now with having all of their information on the waiting list, so I've already got all of their ideas, their imagery, their photos. And, um, and so we've chosen people or Ali uh, has chosen people from that, uh, from that list uh, and, and pulled four or five of them down. So at least I already have an idea of what to talk about, you know, when they walk in the yeah, room. No, that's in, great. So, yeah, have you got be... somebody doing your appointments for you? Yeah, yeah, I have an assistant. Uh, her name's Allie, and she does. Uh, she started just doing appointments and ordering supplies and stuff, and now she's taken over more and more with Fireside. She does all of the social media stuff for Fireside okay. and um, uh, and books, podcasts. Um, every, yeah, she's doing more and more. She's trying to get into like video editing and stuff, but I'm, I don't want to get too far outside. Of, I, I, you know, I like. There's no reason to try to do everything. So she's she's doing yeah. great with those handful handful of things. Uh, it was a it was yeah it was it was great uh, because now what i used to do is i would let emails pile up or, or or direct messages pile up and i wouldn't answer them um uh just because i didn't want to sit down and tell them what my process and stuff was and now i basically just have a little copy and paste i can i can just say hey i copied my thanks for reaching out i copied my assistant alley on this she'll take care of you and then she takes it from there gets them to the waiting list if they're someone that belongs there if it's someone that doesn't fit what i'm trying to do uh, she'll, she's got a list of referrals. She can send a different artist through, you know, in, in town. And then That's I just complete, completely hands off for me. It's really, really oh, nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's yeah, awesome. She's, she's been a complete game changer. It's funny. Yeah. I was, tat I was tattooing her, uh, a, a year and a half ago and, and like double booking appointments. I was having trouble with stuff and I was like, I've got to find an assistant. And then the next month I had some other issue while she was there getting tattooed. I was doing a back piece on her and I was like, Hey, I've got to find an assistant. And then, and then after about the third time, uh, she was like, you know, I might, I'd be willing to interview for that assistant role. <laughs> it, oh, sounds yeah. like, it sounds like you're never going to do it because you keep talking about <laughs> it every time I'm here. So yeah, worked out, worked out great. Yeah. That's worked out well. Yeah. 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 What, um, put me on yeah. the spot. what's that? Uh, it's just like way to put me on the spot there. You got yeah, the job. exactly. You're, like, are you interview, you're hired. hired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're hired right now. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, Ricardo, what uh, What are you working on? You got like a lizard going, like a, a cactus? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're doing the, um, I can't remember what this little creature is called, Jason. Do you remember what it's called? Gila monster. Gila yeah, monster, yeah. Gila yeah. Monster. So this is the so, assignment for this week? Yeah. Yeah. So um, just trying to wrap it up. I have an appointment later today at three. I'm going to be doing this, uh, this opossum tattoo, which is going to be a lot of fun, uh, a, lo a lot of color and everything like that. So that'll be cool. But I have some, some time in between then and now. So yeah. I figured I'd go ahead and uh, get this guy knocked out today, hopefully. What, what, where are you supposed to be with it today? Is this just the block in phase or is it supposed to be like? Finished? I think, yeah, I'm going to try to finish it. I'm going just the black and gray version of it. I think they, uh, uh, the the goal was like the directional lighting, like to study directional lighting. So kind of oh, working okay. on that right now. Gonna I'm just kind of going in and chunking in like all the darks and stuff, and I'm gonna go in and lighten some things up, and then uh, go ahead and put. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead and put the highlights and such, and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. That's cool. What uh, yep. What about you, Jason? Are you doing like some muka stuff or something? Actually, yeah, I um. I had someone reach out to me about about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, and um, they got in touch with me. This is another tattooer out in New Jersey. I've worked shows with them before. I've known them for a while. And they said, hey, listen, I noticed on, on your Instagram, you're taking commissions for paintings. I want you, I want to commission you for, you know, a rather large painting. And I said, well, Hold on there, because my definition of large painting and oh, your definition yeah, you were of large talking painting, about this piece. Yeah. they're going to be different. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So uh, we finally figured out like a concept and a style to go with. And, you know, I was just looking at some some references. We're going to be doing some yellow peony flowers at, in a very uh, Art Nouveau kind of style. So I've got a whole bunch of uh, Mooka's yeah. work. 
yeah. you know, that I can look at. Just trying to work on basic layout and the frame style right now. So I this really has like changed. The what did these? Uh, last time wasn't it? You just had kind of an o uh, an oversized uh, peony like sitting in the bottom corner. Is is this yeah, the same so, project that you were doing that you started out with a uh, last week or week before with like a a big flower in the bottom? Yeah. So this was like one of my initial concepts. I just kind of like threw around a couple ideas because I didn't know what direction they wanted to head in. Yeah. Um, turns out they were in Costa Rica for the past two weeks on vacation. So. That would explain why they never got back to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I was just tossing around ideas and I was like, okay, well, I could do something like this. That might work, you know, just as like a rough idea, a rough sketch. And then I was like, well, maybe they want to take it in a different direction. Maybe I'll do like a snake with it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not that because that wouldn't really fit the format of what I'm trying to do. So I basically took it and I'm starting from scratch. Yeah. Um, and then I was also working on another smaller painting for basically an art jam that I have going on with a couple of friends in, uh, in about a week. Um, a, a, a digital or a virtual art jam or a real life in person art jam? Oh, no, in person. In person. Sweet. We're all going to get nice. together and break out some brushes and paper and mm. sit around, talk shop and do some painting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that layout. We got to do that, so Jason. I've got uh, two yeah. oval frames I'm trying to fill up and come up with pieces for. So figure I'll do a chrysanthemum in one. I'll probably balance that out with like the opposite kind of flow. And I'll do a peony in the other and just kind of have those mounted on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. That'd be cool. Who else just popped in? I saw Jessica. Hey, Jessica, how are you? Uh, you're on. You're on mute. We can't hear you. What? Uh, how's it going? Still muted. There you gotcha. go. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear hey. you now. Cool. How's it going? Hey. What, What's uh, up, guys? Not too what much. Up? What are you? What are you working on today? Uh flowers. 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 I got a uh, some roses, some black work roses. I got to do this morning for a client um pretty simple stuff so just tracing out some roses right now see if i can show you guys let me get this out of here yeah i'm gonna switch my camera over to i've got i need to test my new macbook and see if i can brighten this up do this without it freezing up so there's a picture of the reference the client sent me uh -huh. and then i'm just tracing out some yeah some roses so yeah yeah yeah, that's cool. Uh, usually keep the stencils pretty simple when it comes to flowers. I just outline the flower itself and then try and draw the leaves and the dot work in just to kind of yeah. help everything flow better. So pretty simple this morning, but then I got, uh, after I get this done, I got another sleeve to design for. So awesome. Whoa. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the, what's the sleeve about? Oh, good question. Oh. Uh, <laughs> don't you love so, it when that happens yeah <laughs> you're like it's a really cool sleeve um it what is was it again <laughs> it happens uh, all the time, viking right? runes with ravens and norse tribal oh, very sweet. awesome yes so that one should yeah. be fun so after i get these ones lined out i'm gonna be doing some reference hunting yeah Man, yeah. I, um, I, uh, along those same lines, I've got, can you guys, yeah, it pulled up my, uh, my desktop, didn't it? This is this, uh, here, let me take the, let me take the part of the, that has the, the, no, not that, the, uh, yeah, take that off. Oh, I love so the this direction it, that's heading in. Yeah, so I, I yeah. got it all, I got it all lined um, the uh, uh, last week sometime. So, uh, but zoom, I, zoom, in, uh, zoom in on that so we can really see oh, yeah. it. It's, uh, okay. Uh, sorry. It's a, it's you were talking about this one last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. um, I, uh, I kind of, oh, what did I do there? That's uh, really cool. I, mm -hmm. um, I'm going the wrong direction. Hold on. Uh, so, but what, what I didn't say last week is I, mm -hmm. um, you were talking about doing some like Norse tribal stuff. A lot of this, a lot, well, a lot of this stuff, uh, 
I, I used uh, Eddie Stacy's stamp set. Those, he had this, this one Raven, you can kind of see the Raven that's looking up is basically a Raven stamp from, uh, from the, from the tattoo smart set. And this mm -hmm. one was like um, a little, uh, uh, I don't know, like a sparrow or something that was just facing the right direction. So I just turned it into a Raven, but it was a sparrow stamp. And then this dude's uh, uh, face, I, well, I ended up changing it. He had a head, head gear and stuff on, but this was also just a head was one of his um, like Norse, uh, his, his heads from that. What do you call it? Chaotic black work. Is that what it's called? Chaotic? What's Eddie Stacy's thing called? Is it chaotic black work? You know what I'm talking about? I think you combine hmm. them all into just one set that's called chaos. Yeah. Something. Anyway, so that whatever that set is, um, it's awesome. I've never thought I would use it so like literally, but I may I just like drop those things straight on. Like I drew my dudes. Yeah, there you go. Chaotic flash. The chaotic tools. series. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have them with color. I guess those are what people have colored. Uh Tools of Chaos. That's the one I have. Tools of Chaos and Chaotic Beasts. I think those are the, so the Tools of Chaos, I think is where this came from. Uh, so yeah, last week, I, whenever I was laying this out, I was dropping those stamps in and I forgot to credit Russ and Eddie with that, but man, what a time saver that turned out to be. Um, and then for the rest of this, like the kind of forest stuff that's all come into life. I did like a tree that's uh, up at the top here that's kind of like you know a profile of a creature and then it's like rudy kind of hands and stuff same thing on his inner bicep here like a tree with mouth and teeth and tongue and stuff so he wanted like this this dude is overcoming uh, or has overcome uh, pretty severe alcoholism and he wanted it to be like this uh, he's come through this forest and kind of like slayed these monsters or demons and so i decided to make the forest itself kind of coming to life rather than having actual monsters and um uh, so that part, those parts, I kind of did have to draw, uh, but, but man, like all the foreground stuff, the birds and the dude's head stamp sets. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. They're yeah. serious time savers, man. Yeah. 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 Um, so today I, I didn't have my, I mean, I've got these consultations and everything I'm working on this week is, uh, existing. So I don't have a lot that I have to draw for, but this dude is back in, I got it all lined, but he's back in, in like a week and a half. So I'm going to go through and really try to, the one thing I'm afraid of is getting it too bitsy and like there's so much going on in the piece. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up on my, uh, uh, pull it up, pull up my line work. If you guys didn't see it, I think I put it on my Instagram. Um, but what I'm afraid of is, is it getting kind of, uh, kind of bitsy on me because there's so much happening. And, um, but, uh, so I'm going to go through and like really simplify my shading and just block out my major shapes today. Uh, so, so we have a question in from Australia. Uh, Robin, who's a, a collector, ha, uh, asks, has anyone, uh, this is a good, a good one for everyone, uh, has anyone done a drawing that was really hard? So let's, uh, or maybe we could chat about some of your hardest uh, tattoo challenges. All of my drawings feel hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. There, I got, sorry, I got to, I got to, uh, Someone else want to take that while I log in here? Uh, yeah, I think I agree with you, Jake. I mean, I think that everything that you approach, you try to always end up, um, you know, uh, doing a little bit better than last time, so to speak, or just trying to learn more about your process. So I think that for me has always been the hardest part. Yeah, 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 I agree. Uh you know, that's me, I, I think the hardest part's when, when you're dealing with someone, but they're bit they're a bit too specific and they've got too much of an idea of exactly what they want right mm -hmm. but they uh, don't yeah. know anything about you know tattoos tattooing tattoo layout or design um yeah. and they've just got this this idea that they're fixated on but they don't want to make any modifications and they don't they don't want it to be tattooable they want what's in their head because they think it's a great idea but in reality, when you look at the longevity of tattoos and the way that they, the certain considerations that need to be mm -hmm. taken in, they don't grasp that concept. So they're very unflexible, you know, when yeah. it comes down yeah. to their subject matter, their layout, their design concepts, you know, right. someone that's not really allowing a whole lot of freedom with the process. Those to me are always the most difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's. 
it's difficult, uh, you know, uh, to micromanage a process that you don't understand <laughs> very well. That's what a lot of people tend to do. Okay, here's yeah, here's the here's that piece laid out. So I got all the I was able to get the stencil laid down and the line work down in one day. But see how there's just for my tattoos, especially usually I do way bigger, simpler shapes, and there's just a lot happening in this piece. So I've got a I'm gonna. Uh, like like always, I'm going to look a lot at uh, at Steve Moore, and you know he he'll do that where he has a lot happening, and then he just com simplifies it with his uh, with his values and his color. Like his whole foreground will be dark and purple, and his whole background will be red and light or whatever. So I think that's my goal is just to do foreground in the shadow and background in the light, and and just make the big shapes uh, super simple and clearly defined rather than trying to like make a lot of color and value transitions within like, for example, the figure or within the lion, just do like the whole lion in blues and just go from like more saturated blues to less saturated blues and not try to get too crazy with it. Just keep it nice and simple. Uh, it, that's at least what I think I'm going to do. Cause it's a lot. Yeah. That's, that's a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got another, uh, viewer that's uh, in the chat room here on the uh, uh, the Fireside Tattoo Facebook. Oh, uh, and uh, a little bit of a conversation, so let's see uh, how, how this jumps off. Um, starts off, it seems like a little sour, though it's hard to tell with the text here. So, uh, I'm done with the show and celebrity tattooing community. This show and celebrities can't help others. The community can't for a legit community that stands for all of the tattooing industry laws, nor does anyone uh, get back to questions. So I, I replied, you know, I'm very sorry to hear that you're done. I'm not sure anyone here is a celebrity uh, and yeah. we do our best to get back to questions. Good luck. And yeah, then if, he, if he's on our Facebook page, he's absolutely right about the not getting back to questions. Uh, <laughs> I'm with him on that. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah. then uh, he, this is his last comment. Uh, Fireside, uh, Jake and anyone featured here are the next celebrity artists. If they are here, then they are uh, well-known tattooists. Uh, bottom line is the tattoo in industry is a bunch of individual people rather than a united community that is willing to help others fight back their local government with the unrealistic and unreasonable zoning standards or overreach of the health boards. Um, I guess I just want to put forth, uh, not that everyone here is an awesome, you know, on their path to whatever success might scale up to be, including potential celebrity. Uh, but really, all it takes right now is to log into the Reinventing the Tattoo community, click on the events link, and come on in. And if you're not an asshole, we'll be talking art with you. Um, yeah, we do definitely yeah. have plenty of artists of amazing influence, or you know, uh, that have you know earned different levels of respect or whatever. But um, in this case, for these art jams, you know, we we really do want to welcome everybody, and that comes straight from Gaia's influence of uh, of making these things happen, and specifically so that people can join in uh, from you know people who are apprentice wannabes uh, all the way up to other master tattooers who are are, are down with you know. Again, just being inspired by each other. Um, so with yeah, that, yeah, uh, I'll leave you all to to come. Well, I, you know, I I think one thing that that I think we focused on early on. I, I don't I don't know that I've or I definitely disagree with the uh, uh, with the kind of the idea that it's a bunch of individuals and fo everyone focused on celebrity. I think that from the very start we sought out people to sit down with and talk to at all skill levels. Um, and while early on it was nice to have someone that was well known come on our show, just because you know, it, it meant that I would, you know, that, that people were, would, might pay more attention. Um, we've gotten some of our best feedback, some of our best, you know, interviews, and we've learned the most from like brand new tattooers, complete unknown tattooers, people who are just starting their apprenticeships and, you know, and everything kind of in between. And I mean, I don't know I, I, if, if you've been to any shows, I, I feel like it's as community oriented as it's ever been before. I don't, I don't, um, maybe online, uh, that doesn't come across as well, but in person, it always has to, for me. I've always felt like it's a, a super strong community. Wherever I go, I always feel welcomed. And, you know, there's always great conversations to be had. People are willing to share information. I don't know. That's a, that guy's had a different experience than I have. Yeah, I think uh, real quick, my phone's about to die, but I'll kind of contribute to that. I think that it is tailored to each individual. Um, I think it's unfortunate when some people do get jaded by their experience. Sometimes it's not even an intentional thing by by another artist to kind of um, give you that impression. You know what I mean? Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been in the middle of a tattoo and a client and, and my old street shops have walked in and they're trying to talk to me and I'm focused on my tattoo and they think that I was being entirely rude to them, you know, when the intention was, that wasn't the intention at all. Um, I yeah. think that 
if you do give it an opportunity, just because somebody isn't responding to your emails, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're trying to blow you off. I think this forum more than anywhere that I've ever been, as far as online communities go, has been the most inspirational and like the most motivating for me uh, yeah. up to date. You know what I mean? I've been tattooing since 1998. You know what I mean? So, I mean, hmm. it's pretty incredible, man. Yeah. So it's unfortunate that this gentleman feels this way and uh, hopefully he can, you know, kind of reach out one more time and maybe we could all talk to him and start a conversation about it. And I think that's one of the most important things at this time in the world's life and our, in our community's life is let's sit down and have a conversation about it instead of just jumping to a conclusion, you know, like let's, yeah. uh, let's hear, let's hear each other out, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I, I agree with that. Uh, I think that sometimes like the, uh, the guy had mentioned, uh, you know, not people not responding, uh, online. And, and I know that that's common. All of us, all, all of us tattooers are pretty bad about, about, you know, responding to people who are reaching out for whatever, any, any number of reasons, but absolutely the reinventing community seems like, you know, there's, uh, there's tons of in, on the app, there are tons of conversations kind of going back and forth all the time. It seems really welcoming and inviting. What did, um, what did the, um, what did he say about something about regulation or fighting back government too? I, I don't know what that might be. A well, separate... so the comment is, and, and this is, you know, it's kind of a dual-edged sword, right? It's like, to, to your point, you know, and, and certainly from my experience, you know, and I'm a non-tattooer, right? So, like, I, I only get by on my contributions, you know. Um, you know, anybody that's, you know, talking talking down on the tattoo community, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate to work hard, and it, it's taken me all around the world, eating at the best restaurants, you know, with some amazing people who really, truly give a shit. Um, you know, a lot of people will accuse me of, you know, kissing celebrity artists' ass and whatnot, and, and, and you know, it's, it's really like, you know, or at least the ones that I'm running with for the most part, and everyone's different. Like they don't want to hang out with people who just kiss their ass. They don't have time for that. They're, they're willing they, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they want to hang around and work with people who are again, work, working really hard with their talents to contribute something positive, you know? Yeah. And it's true. Like if, uh, you know, different people do get somewhat different levels of attention, I suppose, you know, uh, uh, certainly we try our best 100% to, Okay, so, so wait, so the question was, so, so that part of it, it's, it's tough to, you know, the, the only thing, yeah, keep trying, really sorry that you had that experience. And not every part of the tattoo community is like ours. If you're speaking specifically uh, to these streams and whatnot, again, it's, they, they are pretty accessible. Um, now, that said, like trying to, you know, band together groups of tattooers into a union type situation where, you know, there's, uh, you know, thousands of tattooers, you know, all paying dues and or energies into something that has, you know, again, to be able to lean on a local uh, health official or whatever, you know, or I guess it was, um, it was health officials and uh, local governments for zoning standards and whatnot, you know, and I guess for me, what I would say is, you know, those, those local polit politics are really on, you know, the, the local studios to, 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 to do. Uh, but on the other hand, we've got tons of ideas and experience, you know, making friends with the locals. Um, although my personal experience is I, I never do an event or o open up a shop or anything unless the community and the local government is like wicked down with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to be able to just land in places where, um, you know, where I, I'm intentionally not landing places where I'm fighting the, the health of the zoning. Uh, but they, they see the, uh, if they don't see specifically the, positive benefits of the tattoo community coming in. Uh, they're indifferent of it uh, until they see the, the action and the money and the people. Yeah. Um, but so as far as unions go, you know, if, you know, it, it is tough to, to get together tattooers to, you know, all pay dues to a organization that's got a board of directors, you know, that's going to have meeting agendas, you know, and then be clear about where all the money goes to and how it benefits the people that are in said, you know, I guess again, you know, union or uh, coalition or guild or, or whatever it may be. So I guess that so yeah. that's the impression that I got from the uh, from the question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, and, and even on those levels, right? I, I think that the community is like you know, like reinventing what we we're trying to do with Fireside, and and then and then a handful, you know. Of, of others have have been more beneficial than anything else and just getting a well think about this whole thing with ink regulation if we were still living you know 10 years ago a lot of this stuff would just go by and, and happen and, be, and laws would be passed and people wouldn't even know until they couldn't order their ink so i mean I, I think they're you know these these communities are great at like bringing awareness to you know potential roadblocks in the you know in the in the future i, I don't um uh i don't really see any downside to the 
to, to the online you know communities the way that they're set up these days uh, no that's that's actually uh, how i found, well i mean i found fireside and tattoo now um quite a while ago but that's why i decided to uh start zooming in because I, i'm from a pretty small town there's only i mean i don't know exactly but last i checked years ago it was like forty thousand people here and there's actually a pretty like there's about eight tattooers in this town but it's a really small town and um the people here really love tattoos, but I, I'm in a private studio. I don't really have like much of a community here that's uh, art focused. It's more kind of uh, just your traditional like um, tradesman tattoo shops. And then a lot of the times, uh, yeah, mostly like the tattooers who treat uh, tattooing more as a, a trade than art. And then also, um, Kind of more like fly by the seat of your pants tattoo shops where it's like they're trying to get as many tattoos done as possible and not necessarily so mm -hmm. so art focused so that's that's right. part of the reason why i decided to start joining in with these groups i've been watching like fireside and uh tattoo now for years yeah. like i think i found it back in 2013 yeah that's yeah. right. We started, and we and we started around the same time. Uh, Tattoo now and all, off the map live and all that stuff. And, and Fireside started yeah. right at the. I mean, within months of each other, I think. Uh, yeah. If I remember Ben telling me, ben uh, gave you Ben. Yeah. Uh, whenever I first met Ben, I think we were talking about. Uh, I first met Ben at um, uh, gave it the thing you guys did in Portland, the worldwide conference. Tattoo. Yeah. And, um, and I, I told him that I did a podcast too. And he was like, oh yeah, I think I've seen it. And then um, we started talking about it. And I want to say that we started our channels literally within a month of each other, two months, something like that. Did, kind of, you, know. you know, we had done uh, a bunch of uh, DVDs and stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. So the, uh, yeah. I remember the, the Tattoo Now, you know, for a couple of years, we were doing all the recordings, you know. Right. Uh, I, you know we, we were, again, like, mostly before we were even online distributing it much, we were, we were DVDing it more than, uh, than anything, but... Um, Right. It's funny. We should do a uh, a show where we get all our first fucking episodes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> our our first episode still gets a ton of views. I don't know how. It is as bad as it could possibly be. I mean, we're just uh, nervous, drinking Jameson the whole time. And, like just uh, I remember <laughs> I remember my like my mother and father in law. Everyone was excited about it. Uh, my wife had told them, and they all they all like jumped on to watch it. And I like you know I'm I'm a pretty like I, I don't curse a lot or anything you know like a fairly conservative dude i guess and like and they watched the first episode and they're like i've never heard jake use language like that i don't think i've uh, watched this show <laughs> <laughs> nice let's see yeah. so uh oh no i got you by fucking five years man uh you joined or at least for youtube uh we joined in 2013 20, the 29th august 2013 and uh we joined the 3rd of may 2007 oh wow okay so, but, yeah. but I guess what Ben was talking about was you're fucking uh, was killing the... me in views now. You got 4.6 million <laughs> views to my 2.2. I remember uh, when we were kicking your ass. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't even worried. <laughs> um, I'll tell you who who I, I know this is destroying <laughs> both of us is the dude. Um, is the um, no? It's not make art now. It's the um, art oh, something. You, oh yeah, that I've, dude, I've watched that, all, that dude is taking off, man. I, he's a super nice guy. I, I did a podcast, with, or I went on his podcast. He was super nice, and at that point, he had like thirteen thousand subscribers or something. The last I saw, he had like eighty thousand. It's only oh. been it hasn't even been a year. I was like, holy crap, that dude's like YouTube superstar. Well, you know, I uh, at one point for uh, some research for a consultant client, I went through and I did a search for all of the uh, YouTube videos that were the most watched tattoo ones. And it's like how to tattoo, how to tattoo, how to tattoo, yeah, how yeah. to tattoo. Yeah. Uh, but fucking, the, I, I paid my penance for that. So for the next month and a half, the algorithms were just showing me every motherfucker who thinks that they can <laughs> tattoo on YouTube. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, this is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Although I'm watching it. Ah. Yeah, Why do we keep yeah. watching it? We will. We'll do a. Uh, we'll do our first episode. Like after I did my third pilot, I. That's when I, you know, brought someone on. I was like, I got to find somebody, anybody, to get in front of the camera, but instead of me, and. Uh, and Ben wasn't even. He, ben was just like a. He was a plumber or something at that point. Was he? Was he just a client? He was a client at the shop. Yeah, and... yeah, he was a client. Yep. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, he was a musician, right? So in my mind, okay. I'm like, you know, anybody that's a musician could obviously just interview anybody. Right. right. <laughs> Which might might not have been the. Uh, <laughs> but uh you know it was uh, it was fun I, you know it, it was good i mean again it, it, i probably should have 
uh, been on camera just a little bit more would have helped me, you know, potentially, uh, you know, as events unfolded. But um, it was also good. Again, it's very difficult, as you know, to like do absolutely every single role. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it was amazing, like all their contributions. It was, uh, there was a couple other people that we'd hired on, you know, at one point we had a, you know, Tattoo Now had like a four or five person team, you know, including, a, you know, a, I think it was like a full time video editor, you know, uh, producer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I and know, then we had Ben, we, and a couple, you know, it was, that was great. Uh, we'll get, the, we'll get, we'll get back there. Yeah. Yeah. We, when we did, when we went to Venice, you guys ah. bailed me out a handful of times. I wasn't prepared with the gear and stuff. And, uh, and you guys had like, Full on, I don't know how many people, but a handful of guys that were going around doing like mobile interviews, like at everyone's stations. And then uh, and then everything I didn't have, Ben had two of them and they were like labeled and in their proper like home where they should have been. It's like, oh yeah, those cables are in that third box that's right over here. I was like, man, you guys had it together. My stuff's all like thrown in a backpack and they're like, I can't tell what cable goes to what. His stuff, oh, he had like labels printed for everything. It was- Yeah, he's, it was he's wicked tight. organized. The, uh, the year before that, uh we had done the um the worldwide tattoo conference there uh, and yeah. so that was like a 900 hundred dollar ticket right and so we were like oh shit we need to have like real computer equipment real video streaming equipment like you know because if somebody's paying 900 hundred dollars for their fucking ticket it better be working perfect and be great yeah. and um so we bought a brand new r2d2 computer it was it was the fucking biggest baddest computer i've ever bought i still actually use it now it's like five years later i'm still using it just fine it's still you know it's That's not nice. as top of point being is we got a brand new computer uh you know one brand new camera maybe even two i think we got like one brand new camera and uh you know we had it all pretty much shipped over to the hotel kind of last minute and uh you know, as an afterthought, because I don't have like thorough checklists, I was like, oh, you know what, we should bring a full set of backup equipment, right? So like, you know, <laughs> threw, threw together, you know, an extra camera, you know, my, basically all of our B shit that barely worked, which is the reason why we're buying all of this new stuff that was going to work great. Sure. And, uh, you know, so I get all the emails leading up to the to the event about the stuff getting shipped over and it's, you know, going through customs or whatever. And then I get to the hotel the day before and it's, it's Italy, right? So it's very kind of laissez-faire, you know, everything just, oh, it's okay, it'll work out, you know. Do we have, mm -hmm. you know, I asked them, do, do, do you have our, uh, you know, uh, equipment or our package? Like, oh, yeah, you can just pick it up tomorrow morning. And I'm like, tomorrow morning? Well, the event actually is tomorrow, so it's, oh, okay, whatever, we'll pick up tomorrow morning. And um, so the next morning, this is Sunday morning. Uh, you know, about nine o'clock, I go to the front desk to pick up uh, all my equipment. And they're like, oh, no, no, it's still in customs. Uh, oh, yeah. And I'm yeah, like, still in customs? This. What do you mean it's still in customs? I thought it was right here. I, and I could just set the shit up in the room that's right there. What, like, where is it in customs? They're like, I don't know. Uh, call, call customs at the airport. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So uh, we spent like two or three hours trying to figure out who to fucking talk to at the airport for customs. We uh, eventually got over there at like noon or or maybe they didn't open until noon or one. And it was like we had to start this shit at five o'clock. Uh, and I was the first seminar. So uh, I'm like, we don't have this shit set up. I'm trying. I like I, at this point, I'm scrapping any sense of like mm -hmm. being able to uh, revamp my seminar, or edit my seminar. As you know, like you edit that shit. You shouldn't be editing yeah. it up to the very last minute, but at that point, I still was, still kind yeah. of am. Anyways, yeah. I'm running around customs. We can't do it, so it's like, okay, now we're using our backup equipment. Uh, we take a peek at everything that we have, and there's one connector that we don't, you know. So we have one camera that goes to one portable computer, you know, that we have everything that we need. We have the adapters for the power, except for one adapter. Okay, well, we'll have to drive to Fnac. Okay. Uh, so now at like one or two o'clock in the afternoon, we're like driving to Fnac. We start in like two hours. The computer's not even, you know, set up to stream. I've got like, you know, 10 or 15 people, not a, a tremendous amount, but enough people that, you know, we need to deliver on this webcast. <clears throat> and, um, luckily the fucking Fnac uh, outside of Venice had the, the right pieces part. They came in, we hooked it all up. We got it set up like literally within probably 15 minutes, you know, we start our test streams. It's working. And, uh, you know, we didn't have it as, as elaborate as we wanted to, but like, we were like straight up, just w one camera on the fucking screen. Don't fuck with it. It works. Uh, and, uh, people were tuned in, you know, from Hong Kong to, uh, to New Mexico. Wow. And, uh, I still, still talk to some of those people. I think we even hired one or two of them, uh, which was amazing. Yeah. Uh. Uh, yeah, those, yeah, all those pack, all the camera days, you know, anybody that thinks it gets easier, it's like it, it doesn't get any easier. Your problems just get bigger. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're screwing up in front of more people. 
Here, well, I'm yeah. gonna, I'll, I'll show off a little yeah. bit of the uh, Venice footage here because uh, it's pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was so nice. And you did a whole set of interviews there. I did. It's yeah. I met a lot of people there. Paul Booth and shit? Yeah, I interviewed Paul Booth there. Um, uh, I did a... a, a um, I met a lot of people there. That's so where we first met Dan Marshall. Uh, I, I sat down with Nick there. David Casson. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, David, David Casson was actually supposed to come to Memphis and do a seminar, um, or not a seminar, do a workshop uh, after that. But then you guys nabbed him first for something else that was like within the same week or two. Uh, so uh, did he come up and do something in East Hampton with you? Is that what it was? Yeah, he came through here uh, a couple of times. We did stuff. Yeah, he's awesome. So. He's really great. And I love, obviously, his project is, uh, you know, with the, the yeah, Holocaust yeah. memorials is out of control yeah. and so important. There yeah. he is, David. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, we did a, a lot. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, Derb was there. We, uh, that was where I first met Derb, I think. We did an interview with him. A uh, bunch of people. I, I can't even remember who all. Nice. Lots of people. Um, yeah. Talking with Alex about trying to do that again. Are we good? And, uh, it would be great. Yeah. Uh, he did remind me it was uh, not not trivial to pull off. I guess would be the easiest thing to say, either in yeah. energy or on the pocketbook, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we also don't have to necessarily have the elaborate party that we had. That was a pretty crazy party. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, where? Are, oh, okay, we're still good on time. Sweet. Well, yeah, man. Back to that dude. I hate that. Uh, I, I hate he's had such a negative experience with the tattoo community and, and particularly the online tattoo community. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll take you up on your offer and jump in on the reinventing group, and maybe you could jump in and draw with us. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the shtick. Yeah. Can I just say something about that? Yeah, <laughs> I opened my one of my studios in the year two thousand. And we had to make sure we didn't have a letterbox because the other tattoo artists in town were going to petrol bomb us. Mm. So uh, I think mm. the community's come a long way since then. <laughs> the fact yeah. that we can just talk to each other online, I think that's incredible. And we can organize campaigns and so on. Yes, we're all individuals, we're all artists, and essentially we all work for ourselves. But this is a great community. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Yeah, yeah I agree. I've, uh, I think maybe people sometimes just get a little burnt out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't know in particular about this fella, uh, but yeah, there's burnout. I mean, and a lot of it depends on who like you're hanging around with, you know, and yeah. if, uh, you know, the, the, you're, you're hanging around a bunch of negativity or influenced by negativity. You might not even necessarily, or, or, you know, when you see something like that, I, I don't know if it feels out of reach or again, if you're just not in tune with the philosophy or the energies and you might not ever really see it. Right. You know, yeah um, it can get it can get discouraging sometimes i mean obviously i can't speak for him but um coming from where i'm i'm at um you know when i first started i had especially watching uh tattoo now and fireside and stuff and watching a lot of like really amazing artists and talking to the people that i was talking to before i started tattooing i had this idea built up in my head about like what tattooing was and it was this really grand amazing thing and everybody was really had like a lot of integrity and was really art focused and stuff. And then I got into the tattooing community. Like I started tattooing and a lot of the tattooers that I met weren't so cool. Um, so yeah. it kind of, it's taken, it's taken a long time for me to kind of like mature, I guess, in that sense, you know, mm -hmm. and start to realize that like tattooing is kind of a microcosm for life for me, you know, it's like, it depends on who you, who you surround yourself with and you got to find your people because tattooing is just like any other career out there you know there's definitely people who are unmotivating and people who are dirt bags and then there's people who are super focused and super inspiring and you just gotta you gotta find your people and um, if they're not locally if you can't like physically be around them locally then that's what the show is for you know yeah but yeah, more. otherwise, I mean, it can get it can get discouraging if you uh, if well, for me personally, it kind of got a little discouraging there in the beginning when I when I realized that a lot of the people that uh, I was starting up around weren't um, didn't kind of have the same mindset about it that I did. I was like, whoa, what the heck is going on? I thought I thought it was all like uh, all the people that 
Jake Meeks and Ben Licata were interviewing and just all these amazing artists who are doing these amazing things. And it's like, yeah. no, there's that guy who's coming in hungover and tattooing while he's drunk and just all sorts of stuff. So yeah, yeah. It can be a little discouraging when you first start. I obviously I can't speak for that guy, but yeah. No, it's um I've been hearing the same the same issues from quite a few people over the past, I don't know, a couple of months, you know, where a lot of people just end up being in <clears throat> this tiny little like area and they, you know, that's what they know of tattooing. They don't really know of the community as a whole and they don't know how open and fun it can be. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my best friends right now, uh, Ricardo, he was on here earlier. He was going through something similar. Didn't really, you know, he, he was looking for that group of people out there that, you know, would help push him to that next level to really help get him involved, really be a positive influence on his tattooing career, on his lifestyle and his mental attitude. And um, he was telling me that, you know, the one day he heard me talking in one of my drawing groups about using the golden ratio for you know composition and layout and he's mm -hmm. like oh maybe i'll join in and um we've been going back and forth you know for weeks now we've got like a little group chat going with a couple other people and um we're starting to get into some some bigger collaborative pieces we have a uh, a collaborative back piece coming up at the end of the month uh oh, nice. the client he's flying out here we're gonna get everything laid out and get rocking on a a massive collaborative back piece. Um, and I was talking to two other people as well. And, you know, it looks like we're going to end up booking a three-way collaborative back piece with someone else in Miami. So, and, and these are people that are, you know, in small towns around the U S mm -hmm. uh, well, one's in Miami, but yeah, that's neither here nor there, but you know, it's, it's amazing how once you decide to take the initiative to just reach out, and become an active member how much that world opens up to you and how you can really start to filter out all that negativity to really just focus on you know improving your art working on your skills and by no means am i the world's best artist i know this you know i'm i'm joe schmo tattooer from you know small town usa uh i'm not the best i have a lot that i need to work on but being a part of this community has really helped me improve in all of these different aspects that I was really lacking. in. So I wanted to improve on that. I took the initiative. I reached out, you know, I started to become a lot more involved and, you know, here I am talking to amazing tattooers from around the world. Yeah. You know, so it just takes some initiative, mm -hmm. you know, if you want it, it's there, but it's not going to be given to you. You have to actively go out and seek it. Yeah, I agree. Well said. Yeah, and and that's exactly yeah what you did. Just started coming on and 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 talking and 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 throwing ideas out there and like uh, and yeah now you know you're hosting a, a drawing group on on Sundays. Yep. You've met you've met uh, made some friends and now doing collaborative work with them. I mean like. What else? I mean, what else can you say? Like that's yeah. there you go. There's the proof. I won't ever forget the first time I joined in on a Monday morning drawing group with you, Jake. I was like, oh man, uh, uh, I'm just gonna sit in the background and be quiet the whole time because like <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's kind of intimidating. So I'm ju I'm just gonna be quiet and just see where things go. And and yeah. here we are having a full on discussion and yeah. you know it's. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that 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 speaks volumes. So and that that kind of stuff wasn't. I mean, you know, I the, the equivalent of um of being able to jump on like with with guy and 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 be a part of his uh his Monday night uh drawing group or or, or any groups it, that it just didn't exist. If if oh, you oh, were oh, oh, what? Wait a minute! Didn't exist. That sounds like an absolute statement, Jake. Uh, well, guy no, has been a pioneer in uh, in streaming. Okay, sorry, I take I know, it back. But, but let's, let, 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 let me let me let me finish. Uh, okay, okay. Whenever I first whenever I first started tattooing, guy was still doing, you know, it, 
just conventions. And there was maybe the book, uh, you know, there was the reinventing the tattoo book, but it's like the, the opportunity to just like walk up to guy whenever he was tattooing at a, at a show uh, was, I mean, you know, you had to be in, in the same town at the same convention and then you had to have the guts to actually try to sneak up and say something or, you know, like it was, the, the, it, no one was, as, was accessible the way that, the way that they are now is what I guess is my point. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. F fair enough. Although uh, I remember investing and, and spending serious amounts of dough so that we could like webcast out and interact with people with, with, with guy. Uh, but yeah. yeah, it wouldn't be like every Monday, it would be like, you know, once a year, once every other year or something, because uh, shit was costly. But it, it did exist. Yeah. I guess my only, uh, my, sorry, the reason why I, uh, I got all, all all whacked out about it is because <laughs> it did actually technically exist, just very rarely. Yeah, yeah. And people weren't comfortable with it. I, mean, I didn't even know what a webcast was probably when you guys were doing that. It, it most most people didn't. I mean, yeah. most people didn't up until, you know, a year ago. Yeah, right. Or if they did, it was too scary. Um, you know, we would be like, all you have to do is click three buttons and you can be talking with Guy Atris and isn't that fucking amazing? Uh, and now they have to, you know, but now it's only two buttons, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and really there. for this, uh, it's Guy's having access with, uh, with his internet uh, for years, you know, again, because he's always been technically thinking and forward thinking about it all and wanting to do it and engaging in it as he could. But, you know, he chose to live in the middle of nowhere, so... You know, the internet was one of the last things that they got there in the middle of nowhere. But now, fucking, everyone's got a little portable fucking TV station in their phone. That's right. Yeah. The world, world changed. Um, well, sweet. All right. Well, I'm, it's, it's five after. I'm going to jump out of here and go to, uh, go to the gym and then, and then get ready for a full day of, of consultations. I did get a bad ass. Well, I'll let you guys know how badass it is after I play with it today. In between consultations, I got like a big mat cutter. Uh, you know, that's like, the, it's on the slides and stuff, you know what I'm talking about? To cut mats for... Uh, cut mat board? Yeah, to cut mat board. And it's like yeah, one, one... Do you have one? Like, this, you just like lay it down and it's got, it, it's on rails. Uh, yep. it, yeah. I haven't opened it yet. I got it like a week or two ago. I took it to the studio and I've just been scrambling. Such a time it. saver, man. Yeah. Such a time saver. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with it today for the first time in between consultations. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Dude, it's yeah. it's great, man. It's absolutely once once you figure out all the tiny little tricks to it, you're like, oh, that's all I have to do. Oh, yeah. okay. The next thing you know, you're making two and three tier mats and yeah, framing up yeah. everything in your house. Like, oh man, let's put a different color mat with that. That would be great. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exciting. I, I can't wait. I, I have so many uh, frames and I have so many paintings, but I have no frames that fit paintings. So this is going to be my solution. I'm going to be able to like uh, cut mats to 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 uh, to make drawings and paintings fit frames, and maybe uh, finally some of this stuff that sits behind me all the time can actually go somewhere. <laughs> Not uh, just like Jake. Uh, real quick before you go, so that yeah. you're leaving on a great comment from uh, from the Fireside Tattoo uh, Facebook feed. Uh, Joseph says, uh, "Hello everyone. I live in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, Canada." I'm new to the tattoo industry and I've only been tattooing for over a year after my short two year apprenticeship. I think your shows are great and I'm looking forward to watching more and joining in with your conversations. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, Joseph, every Monday morning at nine o'clock, well, I guess it's wicked early for you. Well, I don't know. It's got you, I don't know which side I, that is. I don't either, I'm a fucking I stupid it's... American. I don't understand Canada, uh, but I love <laughs> yeah. Canada and uh, no matter where you are in Canada, it's awesome, but you can tune in, uh, you know, Monday morning uh, or Sundays uh, one with, uh, with Jason. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the support. Yeah, I'm glad. To, I'm glad to. I'm glad to go out on a on a positive comment. I hate. Uh, I hate our other dudes having a bad tattoo experience. Yeah, you know. So. Again, it's a. Uh, hopefully, the uh, they will find a, a way to make it positive. Because yeah, if, so. if if this shit ain't positive, then. Like, right. I mean, we're like geeky positive hippie shit here. So like, I don't know where. Yeah. I mean. We try to keep it as positive as we can while being real, right? Because we are in a sh fucking crazy state of nature that doesn't give a fuck all about anything, really. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Thanks, everyone. You guys have a good week, and uh, I'll uh, see you guys next Monday. Awesome. Later, yeah. Um, Bye. If, uh, if you guys, uh, are you guys, if anybody else wants to stay on, uh, Jessica or, or Jason, um, I do have, uh, or, or Morg, Morg, uh a little bit of a script so i have some questions i have a little bit of a of a outline for a documentary that leads into some questions mm -hmm. um 
So I don't know. So if you want to listen to me rant for like two or three minutes and then answer some questions, we yeah. can do that otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that, it'll take me... I, I do got to get my morning started too here soon, but yeah. Perfect. Well, it'll give me uh, two minutes. I'm going to log in on my other phone. And um, again, even if nobody's watching or nobody cares, I just need to get a, get a little bit of this out so I could uh, have Make a rough sure somewhere. Uh, I'll, I'll be right back. Sure. Okay. Oh. Well, happy Monday morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Happy Monday afternoon. Ah. That's right. What time is it where you're at, Morag? Three o'clock now, three in the afternoon. Three o'clock? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's just it's 7.09 here. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm on oh, the yeah. West Coast, the, the States. You'll be feeling groggy. That's why you're all chugging coffee in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I'm kind of a I'm kind of an early riser, but I did have to get up a little bit earlier to actually participate in the show. I uh or participate in the group, I guess I should say. Um, I'm always I always like wake up and just catch it because it's 6 a.m. my time. So I used to usually just wake up and catch it and then kind of just draw. But I felt like I was kind of creeping on you guys a little bit. So I was like, maybe I should actually join in and participate a little bit. Yeah, so I did. I had to get up a little bit earlier this morning. Well, yeah. Appreciating. Yeah. I kept forgetting about it because it's in the middle of my day. I just end up doing other stuff. And then right. because I've been... I've not been tattooing for four months or so because of the pandemic. Like, yeah, oh my God, what day is it? Christ, it's Monday. I've forgotten again. I was going to join. So. Yeah. You know, that's so crazy. I've been um, seeing stuff. Um, see, I'm in Oregon. I've been seeing like uh, posts from tattooers in uh, California and stuff like that. I've been out of work for like eight months and just crazy wow. amounts of time like that. And we were super fortunate here in um, the town that I'm in. Um, it's pretty, like I said, it was pretty small. So I was out of work for about two months and then I was able to wow. go back to work. Um, so yeah, I can only imagine even just that two months, I can't, we kind of knew it was coming. So I kind of prepared myself, you know, like I'm like, I need to draw every day and like get out and walk my dog every day and stuff. But yeah, after a little while, it kind of, it starts to kind of mess with your brain a little bit, you know? It does. Um, and all the things that I used to do quite quickly now seem to take forever so I think <laughs> a simple task seems to just go on ages and well, it's yeah just well you don't hard. have any deadlines for anything no. anymore so it's like why do I need to get up out of bed at six seven in the morning I could just sleep in until noon you know well that's so, it yeah. and also we're used to working to deadlines and appointments and you know I'm used to that and if you take that away yeah. I'm just like, oh. yeah well <laughs> I, I, you're probably not the only one I mean everybody yeah. here Art, artists need deadlines so yep yeah i yeah. agree more with that but yeah that's that's good that you're here um with the group and stuff i'm sure that helps a little bit even yeah. though it is in the middle of your day but yeah we're we've been super 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 fortunate here um even just being out of work for two months it, it sucked but um yeah. i still like just looking at how the people still aren't able to go back to work and stuff i definitely can appreciate my situation a lot. The other thing about being off for four months is when you, you come back, you don't know what you're coming back to because there's yeah. so many people that may not be able to continue with their big piece or because they haven't got the money anymore. Or yeah, I don't know if people are going to have money because they haven't been going out. You know, all these things, yeah. it's hard to plan for the future. So you're constantly feeling that you're in some kind of limbo rather than, yeah. you know, this, this intense structure that we're used to. And it's, yeah. it's take them getting used to. So we're going back in two weeks, but I really don't know what I'm coming into except oh, for just all the backlog, you know, and got to work through that. But yeah. once that's, you know, caught up on, I don't know. Everybody's a little bit worried, I think. 
Yeah, that's, that's totally understandable. You know, I felt the same way going back into it, especially being where I'm at. Um, I was like, nobody here is going to have any money to get a tattoo, you know, tattooing is mm-hmm. technically like a luxury item, you know, and everybody's yeah. just gone through a pandemic and, you know, they're, they're going to be wanting to spend their money on other things. But um, I've actually, this is the busiest I've ever been. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it was good when we came back. I don't know if it was uh, just people getting really stir crazy just from being in stuck in quarantine. And, you know, yeah. when you do get out of quarantine, there's only so many things you can do. Um, so I mean, t- t- tattooing is pretty, pretty special like that. Like it, it's pretty much weathered every, or, or the tattooers, you know, could pretty much weather most of the depressions and the, and the squeezes. Um, yeah. You know, even if you, you know, for most people, even if you lose, you know, like a third of your clientele, you know, two, two thirds of your clientele will still keep you busy for, you know, two to two weeks to two months, mm-hmm. you know, in advance. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, they can't take their $2,000 or $5,000 vacation, you know, so they could get their $500 or $1,000 tattoo. That's true. Uh, yeah. So you might be coming back into, into something better than you think. But yeah, like, I haven't heard of this understanding. Has- you know, I haven't heard of really any tattoo shop that's been able to tattoo that hasn't been going full on gangbusters. That's um, good. But there's always exceptions in different areas are different, of course. But, uh, you know, again, people haven't stopped wanting to get tattooed, you know, at all. I'm also interested in how the pandemic has affected tattoo artists and maybe their decision to move town or to, you know, they've had enough time to think and you know, it's quite an upheaval mentally. So if there's oh, going to yeah. be a lot of shifting around of artists looking for different studios or chucking it all together or opening up Absolutely. their own, you know. I think yep. there will be. There, there already kind of has been. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you, uh, you, you caught that right, right. You know, I remember as soon as it's really, you know, two weeks into it, I was like, oh shit, anybody that's, everyone's thinking about what they're doing right now. And if they want to mm-hmm. continue like all at the same time, you know, obviously a lot of people, you know, come to that point at different, you know, times in their lives, you know, because different things might or might not happen. Like all of a sudden every, every person, pretty much in every profession is like, you know, do I really want to do this? Is this how I'm going to yeah. do it? Like, am I going to fight? Am I going to fight for this? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, fun, fun. I, I mean, it's amazing. Not, not fun, fun. It's a, uh, it's uh, <laughs> interesting uh to see how different people fare through it and it's sad when you know uh you know tragedy really does strike people and that's what what's what's taking them out um but you know uh, tattooers also have always needed to kind of you know uh, it's not horrible to get a little bit of a squeeze to be like don't forget you know you know shit can get taken away from us at any given time yeah yeah that's it. Yeah, California. It's crazy. California, like it's been shut down in California for so long. I forgot that it was shut down. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm like talking to some clients. I'm like, so you know, how, how's it going there? They're like, still shut down. We're gonna open up in a month, maybe. And I'm like, oh my god, wait, oh Moses, it's fucking horrifying. Yeah, you yeah, get used to it. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. So, what's your project, Gabe? Okay, so here we go. Let's see here. This is uh, now we I originally wrote this like forever ago. And I don't know, I've got, uh, it's like one page here. And uh, so the, the, the goal of this will end up being the, uh, maybe the introduction or, or, or edited, obviously, uh, but would be the introduction to maybe a, a, some sort of documentary. Um, and we could use a lot of these interviews that we're doing, you know, kind of as the, the, I mean, we have a lot of people that we're interviewing, right? So, and we're pretty intentional with what we're asking them. But I'm thinking that if we could, you know, frame out a little bit of a documentary, then uh, we could ask people, you know, questions that we could actually edit straight into the into the right spaces. Um, but OK, here we go. This is actually I guess I wrote this in 2013. Um, OK, I wish I could frame this off so I could uh, edit appropriately. But here we go. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to read it as it is uh, with the intention of knowing that we need to edit it. So in 2013, the art of tattooing is in the midst of a true renaissance as tattoo artists push boundaries and have earned the public's trust as they become more educated about tattooing uh, with the desire of, for their bodies to become canvases for unique visions of art. Uh, once hidden in the shadows, then under clothes and now worn openly proudly, the public has embraced tattooing and these works of art are nearly everywhere. Many have called what's happening a modern day renaissance and just as many see a commercialization and soulless commoditization of the sacred art. 
You now see tattoos all over the TV, the movies, and magazine ads on your friends, coworkers, teachers. They are nearly everywhere, nearly all the time at this point. Uh, tattooing's inherent popularity makes complete sense as it's a permanent sacred art that transcends all cultures, uh, sexes, ta uh, tax brackets, political persuasions across nearly every subculture. Uh, tattooers uh, know this best as they interact with uh, people every day with professors, sports fans, computer geeks, musicians, revolutionaries, fashion followers, eccentrics, detectives, bartenders. Uh, these days, nearly a third of America is tattooed, which means that half of it wants to be. Now, while many think the advent of the reality TV shows have brought tattooing into the mainstream, I believe the story runs much deeper. Uh, in the last few decades, uh, wave upon wave of amazing artists have busted open the public's imagination about what is possible within the art of tattooing. And finally, the mainstream is catching on to the magic. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, tattooing makes people become better people. Uh, and that is something that is sorely needed in this day and age. Uh, the strive for perfection uh, and dedication that it takes to get there are timeless. So let's go behind the scenes and, and chat with a few of the artists uh, who have really pushed these boundaries and busted open the new doors uh, to create the amazing art behind the mass appeal uh, the public would come to love uh, and accept, or come to accept and then love. Um, okay, actually I got uh, two more paragraphs here. I'm gonna take a sip of tea. Clearly we need a voice actor, but okay. So while the fad of tattooing may ebb and flow, the driving forces behind this new renaissance are the exact opposite of fleeting. There are serious artistic evolutions happening in one of mankind's oldest, most sacred and personal arts. Tattoos are pretty intense, uh, at the same time primitive and sophisticated, rebellious, well, not yet accepted, uh, permanent to the individual, yet uh, very temporary to the world, uh, rich in deep history, yet an infant of a, of a commercial industry. Uh, incredibly personal, uh, but often inherently public. Uh, this art, which was once guarded, uh, it's, which was once guarding its secrets, uh, is now sharing its knowledge responsibly with other artists. And the lines between tattoo and art are being erased if they ever existed. Uh, it's the artist and tattoo artists evolving before our very eyes. And there are many factors involved with creating and fueling this amazing period of growth. But a few common lessons stand out as the obvious culprits in nearly all of the tattoo success stories. There are life lessons that are applicable for everyone. Educate yourself, work hard, strive for perfection while acknowledging natural limitations, listening to the brutal truth and then adapting, opening your mind, educating others and giving back to the positive in your community. Do these things and then everyone will grow together to, <laughs> to unimaginable heights of success. Uh, the reality TV shows and mass media didn't create this wave of excitement about tattooing. They are following it. Uh, in some ways, uh, tattooing is a cultural Trojan horse. The lessons that tattooing teaches us have been repressed into the subcultures. And while uh, when tattooing was invited into the tea world, TV world, uh, the powers that be saw a, a growing popular art that they could benefit from. And while many tattooers and collectors were perfectly happy in the shadows, the fact that tattooing is on TV made it acceptable for mainstream culture. This means that those lessons will now be learned by the population at large. TV may not have tattooing's best interests at heart, but it's making it acceptable for more people to learn about this amazing art form that could truly make them better people. One event that, I'm, uh, okay, so last paragraph, this is where I get into the intro. Uh, one, one event that uh, exemplifies two of the major contributing forces at work is the Paradise Artist Retreat, if I don't say so myself. Uh, this event conveniently isolates two major factors affecting the, this renaissance, the acceptance of education and the expanding artistic vision. While well, the Paradise Artist Retreat is an event with roots deep and supported by the tattoo world, the, the tattoo machines are left behind for other mediums of art creation. The art retreat has been attracting more and more non-tattooing artists and the collusion of the tattoo and non-tattooing world is simply amazing for everyone involved. The tattooers get to learn from master illustrators and the illustrators interact with some of the most dedicated artists in the world. Uh, indeed, this year's mixing of the fine art and tattoo world is more pronounced than ever. And then we would get into the cast of characters. So that's the, uh, the start of a documentary that we were going to do in 2013 that I'm trying to figure out whether we should do it or not. Update it and do it. I think it sounds good. Mm -hmm. Got my vote. Where Dr. would you Jean? go from there? I mean, what would the format be? Well, uh, uh, this was, uh, well, okay. So from here we have... Uh, a set of questions that we would be at, and I can start by asking that, right? Um, so we would be asking historical questions, you know, what was it like in the old days, you know, and this would be for, you know, the, the, the you know, the, for instance, I've got, uh, 
with it. Where's the guest list here? Sorry, I've got all these printouts. Here. Okay, here we go. So let's see. So we have a uh, guy, Michelle, Sean Barber, Baxter, uh, Chazar, Hannah. Uh, but you know, again, at this point, that, you know, that was in 2013. At the, you know, we, we can really ask these questions from a, you know from a whole wide variety of people coming. You know, I mean, ultimately, you know, uh, asking questions along these narratives would be good for everybody, of course. But yeah, so we have, uh, um, and maybe yeah, maybe we could even just start here. Uh, you know, what was it like? Uh, what was it like when you started to tattoo? Uh, you know, what media were, were you? getting tattoos from and uh you know who are some of the artists that you know first moved you um do you know again you know we can get into the you know as, as tattooing is scaling and you know becoming mainstream do you feel that uh you know feeding the soul of tattooing or, or watering it down you know or both and why that kind of thing um you know, talk, you know, talk about the, you know, both the negatives and the positive effects of these changes over, over time. Um, you know, are there, are there lessons from the old school, you know, or, or, or excuse me, lessons from the old, uh, you know, the old traditions that we should keep, you know, and then lessons that we, uh, you know, or, 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 you know, elements that we should definitely be leaving behind. Um, you know, what does the future look like? How, uh, oh, how have tattoo clients changed over time? Um, so we would be, you know, and, and again, kind of what we would want to be doing is crafting, uh, a set of say six to a dozen questions that, uh, you know, that we could kind of edit all together so that we would have say 12, you know, 12 to 20 artists, maybe even, um, you know, you know, talking about who they feel is, is really, truly pushing the art of tattooing at this point. Um, Sorry to interrupt Gabe. I got to get going guys. Oh, good. Thank it's you for, uh, nice for tuning chatting in. with you this morning. I'll see y'all later. See All right. Bye. Cheers. So the, the documentary would be a snapshot in time. Is that the idea? So that uh, it's very much a reflection of what's going on at the very time that you're doing yeah. this it would, it would, it would, it would, Something uh, a little bit more overarching. No, it would be, uh, again, it would be all in the context of like, you know, this year's worth of interviews. And, um, right. you know, it, we would ask be, be asking about history and whatnot. And, and again, part of it is, you know, if all of a sudden we find ourselves with like, you know, 15 hours of, of people answering the questions about, you know, the historical nature of tattoos, um, you know, again, now, now all of a sudden we have, you know, in our library, you know, another couple hours of, of that in particular. Um, yeah. I mean, ultimately, the amount of, of stories and content that's being already recorded, you know, it's almost, uh, uh, it's almost, I mean, it is a loss of opportunity. It's an opportunity loss that we're not editing these into the, into the storylines that kind of already exist. You know, I mean, we're recording like five to 10 hours a, a week now of live programming like this. And um, my guess is that like, you know, even if you edit it down into a quarter, you know, we're even, you know, uh, a fifth, you know, we're still talking about an hour of like high quality, you know, content that's, uh, uh, you know, worthy. And again, you know, the, the way that people are devouring it, you know, people, it's probably even more than that, just the way that people, you know, uh, watch. Jason, what was the fucking stat? It was like 90 minutes. Yeah. Average. 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 So on the reinventing YouTube channel, uh, the average viewer watches 90 minutes of the fucking show. So that's, I mean, that's a documentary. They're already watching a documentary length content, um, you know, without it being edited. I mean, and so maybe that might be an argument to just, you know, refine what we're doing and fuck the documentary because it's a lot of work. Um, but on the other hand, you know, the more intentional we are about all of the programming, then the, the higher quality it is and the more uh, um, everyone gets out of it. Yeah, sounds great. So when did that, so so do you want to maybe we'll close out with a little bit of story from some some from Scottish history uh, Scottish tattoo uh, lore history lore yeah <laughs> do you want me to talk about Scottish tattoo history yeah exactly it was uh, if you have like five minutes uh, that would be perfect yeah we've um, there's a there's a strong working class tradition about forgetting tattoos in the whole of the UK I think it's quite unique 
but a lot of older men have tattoos. It's, it was like a badge of belonging to a certain class, either the military or, you know, the Navy or the, you know, the, the trades, as we call them, just all the, the working men would have a tattoo either on the forearm and then maybe another one on the other forearm. And then you'd move on to the biceps and then maybe one on the hand. That, that was quite normal. And there was plenty of tattoo artists catering to this. So there's be like working class men with no artistic inclination necessarily. They just needed to be a little bit crazy and do these tattoos on men that other men that were usually drunk. You know, it was just a quite a rowdy kind of environment. Mm -hmm. um, but there was lots of them. I mean, every town would have had their tattoo artist or tattooist or, you know, whatever, <laughs> tattooer, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> so they, it, it's existed in society for quite a, a while. But then I think when people got into punk and rockabilly and, you know, all these other subcultures, it took on a different turn and it became more about music and lifestyle and things like that. But it's a bit different. So this is uh, like late 80s, early 90s? Yeah. 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 Or even well, earlier. I'd say, I'd say it started in the, in the early 80s. Yeah, cool. Who, who were some of the bands that were, uh, and some of the first tattooed uh, punk, punks that were there? Karen the Torch. Um, well, there's, there's obviously there's the, the wild, like the exploited and all the, the proper like Mohican punks, but also I think mainstream artists um, had tattoos like Soft Cell, you know, they, they had tattoos on show and, and it was it, it was becoming kind of normal then, but, but linked to kind of rock and roll lifestyle. Um, but I don't think anybody was as shocked as they might have been in other countries because it's always been part of society. But then a different wave of tattoo artists came in as well. They weren't just, you know, old jock down in the harbour who would, you know, smoke a fag while they were tattooing everybody. And, you know, if the environmental health came around, they don't open the door. And, you know, all the kind of horror stories that you hear about the sponge in the bucket. And when it sinks to the bottom, it's time to change the water. You know, <laughs> yeah. all that kind of thing <laughs> went out, started, luckily, started going out the window, obviously, AIDS you know, gave people a scare as well. So the hygiene and the professionalism just, you know, went up considerably in the 80s. And it's been, it's been like that, you know, climbing ever since, I would say that's, I think that was a big break in, in, um, in the tradition in the UK, in Scotland. Awesome. Yeah, that's fun. And uh, like uh, Lyle Hardy, he was uh, tattooing yeah. people back then. He was also... Bugs, yeah. And bugs, yeah, awesome. That was uh, that was very fun. I, uh, I did get over to your first time in like the 92, 93, 94. Yeah, uh, I, was lucky. I got tattooed by a uh, Tintin, he tattooed my neck like, like, oh, in, cool. the, in the mid 90s. It was uh, it was pretty fun. I was uh, I, and I was very thankful that he wasn't like, what the fuck, kid, you don't have any real tattoos, like, you can't get tattoo your neck. Uh, he was basically like, you know, show up in two months if, you know, I, I, you know, he didn't think I was actually going to show up, I don't think. But um, but I got a nice, beautiful little bird on my on my neck. It was cool. The, yeah. uh, Retina, Lyle's great. I love uh, catching up, you know, hearing some of his stories. He's out there in the podcasts. And um, who, he, what, he must have he, he must have tattooed some of the punk bands or, or, or was he the soccer players or me or, 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 or Lyle or, or, or you? Oh, Lal, Lal did them all. I mean, Lal was like a fixture on the on the tattoo scene. He's, he's from a tradition of larger than life tattoo artists that were the norm before, you know, we all became a little bit tame. Tintin as well, like you mentioned, you know, um, all these characters that, that were, you know, like, like um, just larger than life people that you wouldn't necessarily want to mess with. You had to kind of have, have that little edge to you when you started off. That's kind of faded, faded away altogether. But these, these characters, they're still, they're still around some of them. Yeah. It's, have you been to the uh, Paris show speaking of Tintin or? I have. Yes. I went a few years ago. My colleague was working there and I, I was, it was great. Oh yeah. Well, uh, well let's, uh, let's tell, tell us a little bit of a story about that experience and then we, uh, we, we could close this out because, uh, That'd be fun. It's one of the shows that I always want to, uh, I need to hit before, uh, before I'm done. All right. Well, it's a beautiful setting uh, and, and a big kind of Victorian metal and glass structure. And it's huge and it's, it's very welcoming. The stage is in the middle. So 
there's not like a, a tier of celebrities. Well, they're, they're kind of all celebrities. It's all the people that you want to see in from Europe and around the world, but it's not, it doesn't seem hierarchical and it just, is an, it's a really excellent vibe and all the bars around there are, are full of tattooed people. It's a, there's a lot of, there seems to be a lot of mingling going on. Um, and everybody wants to go there. It's, it's actually so big that it's, it's kind of, um, unless you're one of the really, really famous people, there's a likelihood that you're not gonna do much work because a lot of people just come to see all the famous tattoo artists. I think, you know, that's, that's a little bit of a problem at the really, really high end tattoo expos that there's just loads of spectators and not that many people buying. So I think that the Paris convention maybe suffered a little bit from that, but it's just blows your mind, all the amazing talent that's there. You, I spent two days there and I, and I didn't get tired of looking at what was going on. Ah, awesome. Okay, so uh, why don't uh, each of you uh, take time to let everyone know how they can get a hold of you for uh, tattoos or art. And uh, yeah, we'll, then we'll catch uh, up in a few Me again? Sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Morag Sangster. I work in Scotland and Edinburgh and in Glasgow. And you can find me on Instagram on, um, and, and my, my WordPress blog is WordPress Morag Sangster. I spend more time on that than I do on Instagram. Um, and yeah, look me up. Awesome. awesome. Cool. So um, for anyone out there that might not know me, I'm Jason Leeser. Um, I have the privilege to host the Sunday afternoon drawing groups. If you liked what you saw here today, um, always remember to hit like and subscribe. And who knows, feel free to join me Sunday afternoons at one o'clock Eastern time. Um, Gabe, thank you very much as always for uh, for hosting and facilitating. Always appreciated. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to get a hold of me, or maybe you have a topic you'd like to discuss for one of these drawing groups, send me a message at Philly Inc on Instagram, and um, I'll be happy to make note of it and bring it up during the next drawing group. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks again, everybody, for uh, watching, and we will catch up with you 